Hello and welcome back to the Lynn Lowdown. I'm Danny Vittori and today we have on two people from the Grand Army of the Republic. Talk about several different topics. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming on today. Hi. Thank you. Uh, would you mind just quickly introducing yourself sure. and your positions? Wendy Joseph and I'm the curator of the Grand Army of the Republic. And my name is Patty Pendexter, and I'm the chair of the Board of Trustees of the GAR. Great. So would you mind just giving a very brief history of the GAR, because it has a long and fascinating history here in Lynn. Well, um, the GAR itself was an organization that was created by the returning Union veterans of the Civil War when they came up north. And um, the GAR in Lynn was created only one year after that uh, national organization was created. And um, they named themselves the General Lander Post. General Lander was a general from Salem, so he was a local guy that a number of the men from the post had fought under. And he died very, very early in the war. And um, the GAR that we know as the building and the museum was created um, in 1885 by the gentleman of Post 5. And now in 2024, we're um, trying to revitalize the structure. Yeah, and that's one of the big things you're coming on to discuss is you just had a groundbreaking ceremony to begin a very large revitalization project. Do you want to talk about that? It, it is. What, what we did determined over the past couple of years is that the first step that we had to do is put in an elevator mm -hmm. to make the building ADA compliant okay. because otherwise we're not eligible for most grants oh. and there is a lot of work that needs to be done inside the building and the fa 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 facade needs to be redone. So that is what the next step in this project is. And it has been closed already for several months now, and it's taken quite a while to get here. How, what goes into all that planning, and how, how do you get to this point? Well, the first, why it was, ready, it was closed for three months is that the cost came in higher than we had anticipated. Ah. So we needed to find additional funding sources, mm. which is what we did so that we could move the project forward. Um, the total project is what, between seven and eight million dollars is what it's going to cost to revitalize the whole building, not just the elevator project. And Pat, Patty brings up a good point, the, uh, the large amount of money in that one big chunk is from the ARPA, from the COVID relief funds that were uh, given to the city and um, the city decided to fund to the tune of um, 1.2. Um, and then, and then an additional uh, to to bring us over the edge that we could begin construction, yeah. which is a huge deal. In addition to which, after the funding deficit, the friends of the GAR contributed fifty thousand to the project too, because they've been raising money and getting donations to help fund the project. So that's where some additional funding. It doesn't sound like a lot, but. It was crucial in helping us move forward. And also additional support um, from uh, the city of Lynn through community development. The community, uh, we, we received a community development block grant of $400,000. Oh. So the city is investing heavily in this project. Yes, they are, and like you said, yeah, fifty thousand—that's still fifty thousand dollars. still fifty thousand. And it all, when it all comes together, you get those chunks, and all of a sudden you have the amount you need. That's usually how it works, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we're able to now move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's why it took a little bit longer than the closure, because we needed to fix the get, gap. Get the rest Thank of the you. money. Thank you. And, yeah. and, and that uh, gave me a lot of time to really be able to um, take the museum down, um, packing things up so that they would be safe for construction. Yes, of course. And what's the timeline for completion of the project itself? You know, when is it expected that it would reopen? One year. Okay. It's, it's a year-long project. And it's not just the elevator, it's the storefront, too. The lower level will be done because the bid was so good, you just had to do it. You, you had yeah. to do it based on what the bid was. So we're also doing that. So that's phase one. Phase one would be um, around a year. 
then we see where we are. And another interesting thing I saw is you actually just released a survey as well, asking people what they'd like to see in the buildings. So you're trying to increase that community engagement aspect as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, part of our commitment is to find out how the community wants to see the building used. Mm -hmm. How can we attract more people to the building? Of course, the primary goal is still to honor the Union soldiers, first yes. and foremost, but we want to engage the community. We want it to be a place where the community feels comfortable coming to, that there's events that they want to engage in, so that's hence the survey. And I guess when you're looking at it, what sort of events do you picture there? Like when you think about ways to engage the community, were there any ideas that came to your minds? Well, um, in, a, in addition to events, I'll go quickly uh, back to that. Um, but one of the ways that, that we're engaging is um, possibly having co-working space or yeah. or things uh, things have been floated around um, a, a food pantry, um, a coffee shop, um, various things, and that's one of the reasons why we're um, we're having that community survey. It's it's heavy on space use. Right. What would you like to see in there? And we're we're really um, jazzed about the possibility of. Um, helping the the gap in um, places that nonprofits can rent month to month because of the housing and and the office yeah. situation, but as far as events, I mean, look at that gorgeous top top room in that grand hall. Mm -hmm. That is that is ready for um, fundraisers. If you want to rent that room for your fundraiser uh, yeah, for mm -hmm. for beautiful dinners and. Um, um, actually, uh, the trustees have even thought of really upgrading it. It could be a fabulous movie event as well. I was thinking weddings, yeah, a nice exactly, small wedding. Exactly. But maybe that's a I, little I, extreme. I agree. I agree. That's perfect. But, but that's what, what now that we've um, re reached the first phase, that's what we're going to look at. In addition to finding additional funding, okay. we want to look at using that space really do a comprehensive survey of how we can use that space. Mm -hmm. And I like all the ideas. The wedding, hey, shoot for the stars, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah that's right. It. Yeah, and it's great that now you have the ability to look forward and do that now that the first phase of construction mm -hmm. is really happening. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've mentioned them quickly before, but the Friends of the GAR, they also have a capital project happening, which separate from the trustees, separate from you. Yes. It's volunteers? Yes. Yes, it's it's a 501c c3. It's a 501c3. The friends of the Lynn GAR, and they are just starting out their campaign. They came forward with this fabulous uh, postcard that they brought around um, during the groundbreaking, and they're continuing um, on to that. Uh, we. Um, we have an awful lot of uh, funding yet to go, and these are the right people to get that job done. So, and they're, they're looking at different aspects of the building that they can fund. Okay. Like maybe naming rights mm -hmm. for certain things. So they're, they're, they haven't settled on any specific um, topic, but they are looking at ways for substantial funding to, you know. There's move, move the fill, move the building forward, mm -hmm. and then from there they can decide maybe what piece to focus on, what hard. That's needs. their plan. Yes, yes. Because there's so many potential options where you could do with the funding. Absolutely, yes. absolutely, yes. Dana, you got that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one one of the things that we've applied for is mm -hmm. the Senate Appropriations Committee. Mm. They um, every year they have an application where you can ask for money. Okay. So we requested five hundred thousand dollars to do the facade. Now, is that a pipe dream? Maybe, but we put, we asked for that amount of money. So, well, you never know unless you ask, that's, right? That's what I, that's what I always say. Yeah, you, you got to at least try for it. That's right. right, and it would go a long way. While this elevator is uh, a very costly piece uh, of this puzzle, it's very essential. Right. But secondly, that facade with that scaffolding that's been up there for around six years now, that would be uh, so much of a bellwether thing to have that, that completed so that people could actually see from the outside that the building is moving forward. 
another visual reminder. Exactly. Of what we're and I'm trying to think. I wrapped through. You've gone through so much. I'm so efficient in answering the questions. <laughs> where I will be wrapping up in a moment. <coughs> is there anything else that you wanted to mention about the JAR, about the building project? Really, anything I didn't hit? The one thing that I like to say, because mm -hmm. I have to say it, is that yes, it was a groundbreaking and it was really important. But to me and the trustees, it was a celebration of a couple of years' work getting to this point. Yes. So I was looking at it as more than just, oh, yeah, we're breaking ground. But we're celebrating um, hard work, political will uh, to get this project done in just a different perspective of a regular old groundbreaking. <laughs> Recognizing all the hard work it's taken to get here. Yes, correct? yes. All right. Well, like I said, I'm so glad you could both come on here to speak about that a little bit and talk a little bit more about this amazing building and the projects that you have moving forward. Thank you, Thank Danny. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anytime. And once again, I'm Danny Vittori. This has been the Lynn Lowdown, and we'll see you next week with more guests.